Hey guys, this is MacHeads101 with our 22nd iPhone programming tutorial. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you some of the common problems and errors that you might have while programming for the iPhone. This is a video that our subscribers have actually requested a lot, so I'm going to finally be showing it to you. Before we get started, I want to mention something. When it comes to programming, the computer will, unless you have a bad computer, like your computer just crashes or does something completely wrong, uh, but 99.99% of the time, if something's not going in your program the way you want it to go, it's because you did something wrong. I mean, it's just, you gotta face it, no matter how, how big your ego is, people make mistakes, and computers, normally they don't, unless they overheat, you know, there, there are physical hardware problems, but that generally isn't the cause for why your program isn't working. So I hate to break that to you, but... Uh, so in this tutorial, I'm really going to be showing you all the mistakes that you might make and I'm going to be showing you how to see that you've made them, like any indicators that uh, certain mistakes have been made. And I'm also going to be giving you some tools that will help you in the future if you run into any problems that I haven't covered in this video. So in Xcode, we're going to go to File, New, New Project. And by the way, I'm using Xcode 4 in this tutorial because uh, it seems like more of our subscribers use it than Xcode 3. But anyway, in the new project uh, dialog, we're going to make an iOS application. Make sure it's a view-based application. Now hit next. All right. The product name is going to be problems. Okay. Um, now, here are some problems that people already make or uh, errors that they make. Uh, you want it to be for the iPhone. We don't make iPad apps in these tutorials. These are iPhone programming tutorials. Uh, that's why it's, the title is iPhone programming. Uh, not iPad programming. Alright, you can leave the company identifiers, whatever, it stays there. Alright, click on create. Alright, so here's our app. We'll click on our viewcontroller.h. Here's another problem that people make, or another mistake that is made commonly. Uh, you want to write all your code in the view controller, not in the app delegate. And also, you want to set up all your interface in the view controller XIB, not main window.xib. Keep that in mind. Uh, we're doing things with the view controller. We don't worry about these things, in these tutorials at least. So we're going to be making, uh, as our first example, we're going to be making a simple app where there is a label and a button. And when they hit the button, the label changes to say something. All right, this is probably the easiest app anyone could ever make. Uh, other than a hello world application so uh, hopefully most of you guys could make this without running into problems but um, I'm gonna be showing you one of the problems that you might face while making something even this simple so I'm not gonna tell you what the problem is uh, see if you can find it uh, if you can pick it up while I while I make this app but um, I'll show you how to figure it out in a second anyway so we're gonna make an IB outlet for our label my label and we're going to make an action. All right, button press. Okay. And we're going to go right into the code. Go ahead and throw this in there. All right, and then we're going to say my label set text. This is some text. All right, now let's throw it up in uh, Xcode's interface builder. Now if you're not familiar with Xcode 4, uh, they don't use Interface Builder anymore. It's all built into Xcode, so um, that's actually quite handy when it comes to uh, convenience. You know, you don't have to wait for this other application to load, um, so that's nice. Okay, here's our label. It'll start out saying, this will change. And then we'll have a button right here in the middle. Change. Okay. So we're going to control click from this button to our files owner for button press. Now let's go ahead and save. Press command S in interface builder. And we'll go back into our view controller. You can see our code is written here. Everything's fine. We run it. No errors or warnings. Nothing wrong. The only problem is that the title of the app is Problems. So let's see if this app works. We click on Change. And what? What? why is nothing happening? Alright, most of you guys probably picked up on this. Um, 
but some of you probably didn't. In Interface Builder, I did not link up the label. I didn't do anything with this label, so there's no way that our code would know about this label. Now, I'm going to be showing you a couple ways that you would figure this out without me telling you. Um, the first way is, hey, maybe if the text isn't changing, maybe this function isn't getting called when they click on the button. So let's throw something called an NSLog here. Button pressed. NSLog is really a debug tool so that in the console, in the console you can open that up right in Xcode 4 right here, in the console a message will show up wherever an NSLog is. That way you know that um, something is happening, some code is getting run. Okay, so let's go ahead and run it. And we click on change and boom, the console comes up and it says a button press. So our function, our method is getting pressed when they click the button. So that's not the problem. So we're going to have to do a little more debugging, aren't we? Now here's a tool, I've already showed you how to do NS logs in previous tutorials. In this tutorial though, I'm going to be showing you another thing called breakpoints. Um, now what is this, you might ask? Uh, well a breakpoint is something in your code, it's in Xcode, it's a little blue thing next to a line of code. And when that line of code gets run, Xcode will stop right there, uh, bring you to the code window, and you can look by hovering over different variables. You can see what variables are. Um, so let's close that, run it. All right, we click change, and boom, Xcode stopped right at our breakpoint. Okay, now I showed you already that we didn't link up my label in Interface Builder, so. If we hover over it, you'll see that right there it says 0x0. Zero zero. Okay, right here is where the address of the label is. Now, by address, I don't mean street address, road address, street number, house number, etc. I mean the memory address. This is uh, basically a pointer in memory. It's a number that indicates where in memory this label is. And we can also look at this, it says like width equals nothing, height equals nothing, invalid summary. Uh, but mainly this 0x0, zero zero, if you ever hover over a variable and you see this right here, it means that the variable doesn't isn't set, it's uninitialized. So right now my label isn't set. We know that because we hovered over my label, and uh, as you can see one more time, we hover over it and it's zero. So that's how we know that my label isn't set, is by setting the breakpoint. So we can go back into Interface Builder now, and we'll link up my label. Okay, now let's save it, and let's go ahead and run it. Let's see what it looks like now. All right, so we click on it, and it works. Fabulous. Um, now let's cause another problem. This is another issue that people bring up a lot, uh, and this will cause a warning, but it won't cause an error. So let's go right here. And let's get rid of this at sign before the quotes. Now Xcode 4 automatically does the warnings, but some of you might not see this until you run it. Uh, everything opens fine. There's a warning, but there's no errors. We click on change, and what? The app just crashed. Now, I can't really explain to you guys why this is happening. Um, well, actually, yeah, I can. So the thing is that when you put an at sign before quotes, this is an NS string. This represents an NS string object. Um, my label set text takes an NS string object. Okay. Now, since Objective C is a subset of C, all right, we get rid of this at sign. This is still valid, but this isn't an NS. Whoops. This isn't an NS object right here. This is a C string, which is just an array of characters. Now. Uh, I can't really explain to you, uh, unless you watch my C tutorials and uh, some other Objective-C tutorials, exactly what this means, but let's just say that you need an at sign before the quotes. It might not, it might let you compile, and it might let you run, but it's certainly not going to work. And Xcode is nice enough that it actually tells us that this line of code is the one having the problem because, you know, it has this error. Sometimes uh, Xcode won't do that for you. Um, and that, that would be an issue. So that's just for reference. Uh, make sure you do that. Now we're going to be using this example for a couple more of these errors because, uh, 
or these problems that I'm going to be showing you. We're going to be using this this app that we already have, even though it's so simple. Just 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 for a proof of concept, I guess. So in our .h now, we're going to make another another method that that can be called. This isn't going to be when a button is pressed or anything like that, but yeah, let's go ahead and we'll make a method called set. Uh, let's call it set label text. All right, and it doesn't take any parameters, nothing. So let's go here, throw this up here. Okay. Now let's say we want this code in this method. We could say self set label text right there. Okay. Now there's going to be a warning, but there's not going to be an error. And uh, if you can't pick up on why there's going to be a warning, I'll show you in a second. But let's go ahead and run this. All right, we click on change. What happened? Why did the app crash right here? Well, we can go into the console, and the console normally has some info about this. It says, set label text, unrecognized selector. Now, a selector is generally, in Objective-C, a method name, like uh, set label text, for instance. Now, if you can see something here, this is not the same as this because this has a capital E. I intentionally capitalized the E right there uh, for this example, but you have to have it's case sensitive. Function names are case sensitive. What happens if we we do this? This should work fine. So th let me just prove to you guys that this works if we spell the function right. Yeah, so it works. Now the thing I'm going to be showing you now. Let's say instead of saying self here. We were to say sender by accident, okay? It'll run fine. There aren't even any errors because uh, Objective C uh, is flawed, kind of in that way. But when we click change, it still crashes. There are no warnings or errors, but it crashes because sender in this case is the button that we clicked on. And how is that button going to implement this function? It's not. Only self is going to implement set label text, the way we did. So uh, that's just another problem is uh, either having the receiver wrong, which is here, or having the selector wrong, which is here. All right. All right. Now, here's the last problem I'm going to be showing you. And this problem won't actually change anything about our app because uh, it's kind of pointless. But um, this is something that people run into a lot. So let's say we write, uh, we have, we decide that we want to have, like, let's say a segmented control, something like that, that takes an array of strings. Um, so normally what we do is we say NS array, my array equals NS array, array with objects. All right, and we give it some objects. Let's say first, second, oops, third, all right. Now, Xcode 4 did it for us. You see how there's a nil at the end here? This will work fine, even though there is a warning since we didn't use this variable. This will work fine. All right. Now, let's say we got rid of this nil. Okay. Let's see if it still works fine. All right. We go ahead and run the app. Okay. Click on change, and it crashes on this line. Um, now, once again, explaining to you why you need nil is kind of pointless. Um, but just know that for things like this where it's separated by commas, you pretty much always need nil at the end to terminate the sequence. Um, but that is another problem that people run into in numerous places. They're actually like with an alert view. Uh, our next tutorial, I might show you some stuff with that. Uh, with an alert view, you're going to need to terminate it with nil too. So there are many instances where you need a nil terminator, and people sometimes don't put that there, and it causes your app to crash. Um, Another tool is if your app crashes, you'll see a little trace back right here. Uh, here's the trace back of all the things getting called. So first the main function is called. That's pretty much there for everything. Most of the time it's in a run loop. And we go all the way up until you see this little icon on the left. That means it's our code that we wrote. All right, we click on there and that'll take us to the line with the actual problem. And now here's like, yeah, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, so that is, uh, those are some of the common problems that you'll find uh, when programming for the iPhone. Um, so hopefully it helps someone out. Uh, so thanks for watching MacHeads101. Subscribe and goodbye.